A plate of small white flowers in which nectar is either uh, exposed or very readily accessible uh, is one of the most popular inflorescence blueprints in the floral kingdom. Uh, we associate it particularly with the umbellifers, the carrot family, but it's found also, this type of inflorescence is found also in a wide variety of other families. And the reason for its popularity is because it has a large number of advantages. Uh, it can be seen easily from afar. The large number of flowers in the plate mean that there's a likelihood of, uh, of a, a lot of seeds being produced. And the abundance of freely available nectar means that the large number of insects likely to be visiting it uh, will bring about cross-pollination between the flowers on the head. And there's a good chance of uh, them bringing in pollen from other plants as well so that cross-pollination with other plants can also uh, take place. So it's very easy to mistake yarrow for a typical umbellifer. You can see you've got the same plate-like inflorescence uh, made up of a number of subsidiary uh, clusters of flowers, except that if you take a hand lens to these little individual flowers, you discover that in fact they're not flowers at all. Each of what at first sight might look like a single flower is in fact an inflorescence. Each of those little florets is a cluster of individual flowers that look like miniature daisies. And in fact, yarrow belongs in the daisy family. It's a composite. There are typically about five female ray florets and 20 or more disc florets, each a narrow two millimeter tube that expands at the top to a one millimeter bell in which nectar accumulates and is readily available to the most short tongued of insects. The flowers are enormously attractive to these, upwards of 100 species and maybe more being recorded. Something like half of them bees and wasps, numerous flies, fewer beetles, but hardly any butterflies or moths. The rest of the plant also supports a wide range of invertebrates, leaf mining and case making micro moths perhaps most noticeably. A more unexpected use is by cavity nesting birds such as starlings, which use yarrow as a nest building material in order to inhibit the growth of parasites. You could fill a book with accounts of the use of yarrow in traditional medicine and herbal lore, especially given its widespread distribution right across the temperate northern hemisphere. But um, a more practical down-to-earth example of the use of yarrow, perhaps, here in Ireland especially, is that it was an essential ingredient in traditional grassland mixtures. Because of its ability to sequester nutrients at depth in the soil uh, and its ability to withstand drought and its high nutrient value, it's uh, particularly attractive to cattle, for example. The name yarrow. Yarrow is the old Anglo-Saxon name for the plant. But the Latin name is Achillea millefolium, the millefolium bit referring to the milfoil structure of the leaves, so deeply divided into what looks at first sight like a thousand leaflets. But the name of the genus Achillea is named after Achilles, the greatest of the Greek heroes in the Trojan War, who used the plant to heal the wounds of soldiers wounded in the battles around Troy. And 3,000 years later, Yara was being used for the very same purpose, to heal wounds on the battlefields of the American Civil War.